It's Eric with Midgard Arms again. I'm gonna give you a quick little how-to what I'm gonna do here. So I got my seven mag and I've got a pillar bed glued in the back here, epoxied in the back. That's Mauser action. So the Mausers, they have a pillar bed halfway built into the action there itself and it goes into a nice little notch inside the bottom mill. But anyway, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a reinforcement thread in here. So I'm gonna cut a piece off of this uh, little piece of all thread here. Cut a couple pieces off, stack them in here in this partition. Um, I was going to do a cool little through um, through pin here uh, with a nice little design on it and everything else, but I decided I, I like the way the wood looks pretty plain and everything else. It's not necessarily a sleeper, but you know, it just looks classic. It looks nice instead of dolling it all up and everything else. I'm just going to kind of leave it the way it is. So first things first, take the action out. Okay, take the bottom metal out. So I fitted this nice and tight when I was doing all the work. So sometimes I have to whack her with a mallet to get it out. All right, so get that guy out. Forgive the mess on the workbench, but as you can see in here, the rear of it has a, if you see that little ring inside there, there's a nice little pillar bed back there. Okay, so first thing I need to do to see what length of rod I need. Just mark it. Get your Dremel out with a cutting bit. Okay, so cut it to an, a little bit of a length there, and see we're going to do two of those. We're going to stack it right on top of each other. Mark it with the other one. Cut that guy off. Okay, so we get that one to break off, and we got two little pieces that are going to go right in here, stack right on top of each other, and if you guys remember my video from when I broke the stock on this originally, when I showed you guys that with my 308 Norma, that Norma stock that originally came on it was broken right here, and this little partition here was broken out of it and everything else. So this partition on this particular stock is pretty, pretty thin, so I'm not going to try to run a uh, support system there. Uh, what I was thinking about doing was getting a piece of sheet metal, do like Weatherby does, and it'll conform a piece of sheet metal in there, and then epoxy that to there to give it some strength that way. So, next thing we need to do is dig a little trough to put those two pieces in. So we'll change bits on our Dremel tool here. And we're just going to go with, I like using this guy right here. It's like a little, uh, like a little arrow point. It gives a nice little digging surface where you can start a hole, and then it's wide enough to where it uh, you can widen it out. So, kind of put that in there, give it an idea where you want to put it. Let me see here. Sorry, I'm dressed up to go to work, so I like to use pencils when I'm doing any fine tip work just to kind of mark where it needs to go. Right there. Don't know if you guys can see it, but right there you can kind of see that little pencil mark that I made, and that's what we're going to gouge out. And we want to go at least a little bit deeper than these two are deep like that because we're going to make kind of like a wall in there. We're going to trump it up.
all right so I know we're for sure one deep looks like I need to widen it out a little bit more so since I'm getting down to where I need to start cleaning the bottom out I'm gonna go from this pointed bit to a nice square bit okay so that guy is a nice square bit it'll still cut flat but I can widen it out smooth everything out So it looks like that one's dull. So if you don't got a sharp tool, it ain't gonna work for you. So you just take that guy, throw it in the garbage bucket. Okay, so what I'm gonna switch to instead is just a little ball. And this one's a brand new bit. I just got these bits the other day doing some uh, carving on a doing some carving on a stock so I got that set there there. Just got to open the sides up a little bit. And now you don't have to necessarily put these in here if you don't want to. If you feel comfortable glass bedding the whole, the whole, uh, action like I'm gonna do anyway it, it'll more than likely be okay but I want to have extra protection uh, when it comes to the strength of this stock so I don't want to take any chances because the last thing I want to do is end up like that 308 Norma stock was originally and have a big crack going from here from here to half to Georgia you know Okay, so that guy goes in there pretty decently. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go to my vise over here. They're a little bit different lengths, so I'm gonna go to my vise over here and uh, file these to the right length that I need or the same length, and uh, I'll get back with you. All right, you guys, so I got the pieces filed down to the same length. They fit perfectly inside. The groove I notched in there sits flush with enough room to make sure when I bed this and I got my I'm using JB Weld again because that's what I got today. Uh, got everything underneath the line here or underneath the flat part. So when I epoxy all that in there and then bed the action, it's all going to be one smooth transition and then we'll have that nice and back, uh, nice and strengthened. Okay, so we're going to pull those out. I got all my parts coated with release agent. I just use a heavy like axle grease works really well and it works well with other things as well not just this JB weld it works good with the Brownells Acroglass 
it works good with most everything I've used except for that P PC3 or something that I tried last time when I broke this stock. So I'm not going to use that stuff again. If so, I'm going to use a better release agent. Okay, so you want to tamp the epoxy inside there so it fills up all the crevice, crevices and cavity, the whole thing. And you want to put enough layer in there to where it's, you don't want to be like, oh, well, that's enough. No, you want to put enough in there to when you push the rods in, it squeezes out. Okay, so we're going to get one rod in there because i got a nice base. Get one rod, push that down. And now that rod pretty well disappeared with all the epoxy I threw in there. Throw this next one right on top of it. Okay, so that's pretty well covered in there. I'm going to try to spin that thing a little bit, get it well coated. And then I'm going to start packing in the epoxy around it. Okay. So me, I don't like to necessarily epoxy the barrel channel until I shoot the thing, see how it's grouping, and then I can come back and I can open this up if need be and epoxy the barrel channel. So what I what I usually do is only go about a half inch or so on the chamber end. And I like to bring this all the way up to this line, and I have rags and stuff if it spills over. I have rags, I can wipe off any access. Sorry, my cat's wanting attention. His name's Bobby. He's a bobcat in Maine Coon. It's one cool thing about living in Idaho. Idaho, you find some exotic cats out there. He's only uh, about 10 weeks old right now. All right. Okay, so JB Weld isn't set up very, very fast, so you do have some time to work with it. So I like to take my time. I like to take my time and just methodically put everything in there. And then when I need more, I just mix some more up on what I have. I don't need very much more because I'm only going to go down to here. I have a double set trigger on this thing and I don't want anything impeding the function on that. And then mix it up.
excess or anything that flies off just get yourself a little rag this JB Weld wipes up quite nice I'm going to mix up just a tiny bit more to put inside that lug recess just because I want that to pretty much ooze out. Okay. Going to go around that pillar hole in the front. Try not to get anything necessarily in there, inside that hole, because you don't want you don't want your action to be t difficult as heck to get out. All right. All right. I always keep a trash bucket. Throw that right there. First thing I always want to put in is the bottom metal when I'm bedding. And to me, what that prevents is any kind of oozing going down and plugging up that hole. Okay. So just I'm gonna dab some more grease down here just to make sure I got it very well greased up so I don't get this thing stuck in here again. And go further than you think because if it oozes out, it's going to get on stuff that you didn't think it would. And it's going to make your day not too fun. And I don't want to start this project over because I like the way it looks. Okay. Okay. So, I literally just set that thing in there where it should be going. Okay. Grease your threads on your bolts. Grease them well, especially the front one. The front one of the Mauser is always the small one. Grease them very well because when you start squeezing it all in there, it's going to ooze into places. Like you want to grease it well because it's going to ooze into places you forget you had. So I like to start with the front one, turn it in a few turns, put the back one in a few turns, and then you're going to start adding some tension. Slowly add tension. You'll start to feel it. Okay. I'll go until I feel a little bit of resistance on the front one. And then go until the back one stops. Remember, I got the pillar bed in there, so you don't need to crush it. And then go to the front one until you get to about where just a slight little turn stops your wrist, okay? And then if you can look, see it's starting to splooge out a little bit up here in the front? That's what you want to see. A little bit right there, all right here. You want to see that. That means you got a nice good coating in there. So what we need to do is cut off another piece of rag. Okay. And then I use either rubbing alcohol, this is 91% rubbing alcohol, or acetone. I like rubbing alcohol a little bit better than acetone because it's not as harsh on the finish and it uh, doesn't evaporate as quick. So you take that and look over here, you got a little bit of epoxy there, a little bit of epoxy there, a little bit on that piece right there, okay? And you'll just follow this around 
and wipe up that epoxy. Now you don't want to go scrubbing because you're going to start wiping away some of that grease. But you just want to get that epoxy off of there so it, you don't have just a lump. So you don't have just a lump that you have to essentially chisel off in order to get your stock out because it'll act like a little lock in there. Okay. Okay. All right. Do the best you can getting all that out of there. And as it sits, that stuff's still oozing in there because it's a liquid. So you'll have to might have to go over it a couple times. Oh, if you see that inside the uh, trigger guard hole, nice little mess coming out there so we want to make sure that gets cleaned up and there she goes all right you guys i will get back to you after work today i'm waiting for fedex to call me and then uh we'll get this thing probably taken out this evening it takes usually about uh 10 hours or so to set up and we can pull it out clean all that up cut it off with a razor blade it'll be kind of malleable kind of soft a little bit rigid all right, it'll still hold its shape but anything that oozes out we'll be able to get a nice little razor blade in there you know something like that and then cut it off you know if we have to touch anything up on the finish it's just true oil you can just go right over top of it so I'll see you guys later all right you guys it's been sitting all day it's been probably about uh, what is it six o'clock ish or so now so it's been just about 10 hours uh looking at it there's no more excessive gunk coming out the sides that's all been cleaned up uh, there is a little bit that came down into the receiver and touching that it's plenty hard so let's see if she comes out all right all right first screw come out pretty darn good Looks like I got a little smudge or something there. It's all right, we'll get that out though. All right, if you guys hear some weird music in the background, my kids are home, so they're all listening to some YouTube videos. All right. So, while I was at, kind of got off work a little early today, I guess I could have cleaned my workbench off so it didn't look like such a big sty. But, they had other stuff to do with the house. So I usually just take a old shirt or a rag or something, kind of grab it, like old school, just give it one quick slap, and the action just works itself right out. So, you can see that. See that kind of little rough textured area right there? That's where the... Uh, that's where the all thread was pre pl pre uh, placed in right there. So, once we get that... So, remember used a uh, big heavy grease as our release agent. So we need something that will kind of dissolve that release agent. And so I just get in there with that uh, rag with some rubbing alcohol on it. And I just wipe everything down in there. Okay. Alright, so you can see after squeezing it down, it went from, we kind of stopped our B 
bead right there and it just kind of splooged out a little bit up to the front that's what you want a little bit of support toward the chamber never hurts okay so get the release agent off the firearm and you don't have to use rubbing alcohol you just use the rubbing alcohol because you can get that stuff at the dollar store it's super cheap um, I also use brake parts cleaner but I'm pretty well empty on that got a little bit brakes part cleaner works really well a lot of people online will tell you oh you shouldn't use that it'll take off your bluing this that and the other I've never had an issue I've it's cheaper than like your gun scrubber spray and everything else and it evaporates really fast if you leave a little extra grease on your uh, moving parts and stuff it ain't gonna hurt nothing I mean that's one of the reasons why I like that grease too because I mean if you miss a spot it's not gonna do anything you like the release agent you get with the acrid glass and stuff is like a blue paste that you paint on and man you'll be picking that stuff off metal pieces and everything for years to come I mean that stuff works amazing it really does it works amazing but you'll be picking that stuff off for forever stuff yeah just a pain in the butt to get off all right so there's kind of a lip for the excess that came in right there so what we'll do we will try to get our razor blade in there because fuel, fuel full cure on this is about 24 hours so if you just have a sharp knife you can usually cut all that stuff off so I just rest it up against the magazine plate in there and then I just scrape along it there she blows and then once I get this off we will get the bottom metal out So when we're getting the bottom metal, I usually have these little stubby Harbor Freight punches like this. Find the one that fits onto the little recoil lug recess in there. See this one or the big one? We'll do the big one. Okay. And just get a rubber mallet and you'll just tap the recoil lug down. Tap that down. You don't want to tap down here because there's a hinge right there. If you bend that or anything like that, that floor plate is just going to get jammed up and it's going to, and you're going to hate yourself for it. All right. There it is. All come out. Take whatever you have left on your rag to clean all your stuff off. Anybody's never seen the two double set trigger? That's kind of what it looks like there. So this is your main trigger. This lever here is the main trigger as you pull the main trigger. And then when you set this one, you'll hear a click. And then this other blade on this side, when you pull the trigger, it, it literally is like a little uh, like a little jackhammer thing. It'll just shoot right up and hit your little sear spring lever. And then it'll go off. And it's very light. I should, uh, I should measure it, but I, I think it's around 2 pounds or so. Maybe plus or minus. Very interesting. And you don't have to get this all freaking beautiful and everything else right away. You know, you're just kind of wiping off all the excess grease. And then go in here inside the stock. And same thing. Wipe off the excess grease. All right. So. Wipe off all that excess grease and so-called release agent. And then what I do... If you look in here, you have your wood, and then you have a lip from where your action sat on it. So you just want to do the same thing as we did to cut the bottom metal off. Just go slowly along that wood. Don't dig into the wood because you, you're trying to uh, keep it watertight and everything. You know, you don't have expansion and everything else with moisture. You just want to cut off that excess compound 
You just go very slow, no need to rush in this. Not only will you mess up, but you can also cut yourself. It's a razor blade. I don't know if anybody's ever cut themselves with a razor blade. I was a roofer for about 10 years before getting into what I really loved, the gun market. So I've had plenty of opportunities to cut myself with razor blades. So not very fun. I've had, I, oh, I can't even tell you how many stitches I've had from just razor blades. All right. And that's pretty much it. So if you don't, if you don't come back after, say, it's been about 10 hours, if, if say, you can't get back to it till 24 you know, hours later, something like that. The only difference of what you have to deal with is that your epoxy in here isn't going to be as easy to cut. So at that point, if I get to that point, and I've done it before, it doesn't bother me. You know, life happens, you get busy, you can't sit and cry over things. You would just get a mill bastard file. Oh, where's my mill bastard? Oh, that's right, I used it earlier, huh? So you just get in there with your mill bastard file, and then you just slowly work on that, and that'll just file that right off. It's nice and soft when it comes to a, a metal file like that, and it comes right out. So, anywho, that's it, guys. That's a little pointer here. This little kind of roughed up looking area right there that we, we can see in the video is where we put in our all thread right there, two layers, one on top of the other. And then we went ahead and bedded the whole action. Nice flat surface behind the locking lug there. Nice flat surface for everything to butt up to. Support around both sides. Right here, oh, got a little gap right there. That's not the worst, worst I've ever seen. But anyway, yeah, we got nice support on both sides of the action. And this has already been pillar bedded for in the past. I pillar bedded it in the same time, bedded the uh, bedded the tang of the action right there. So that's it. Supported for the magnum chamber, bedded chamber, bedded action, ready to go. Put this sucker back together, getting the scope for it. Um, I was using the Cabela's Covenant Tactical four second focal plane scope for this. Um, I actually ended up putting that on my 308 Norma. Don't know if anybody noticed that when I was sighting in my Norma. But uh, I have a buddy, a really good friend of mine, best friend of mine. Uh, he had his father pass away. Um, oh, it's been probably 15 years now. His father passed away. And before he passed away, he had a dream to go on a big elk hunt and he bought this nice fancy scope for it and everything it's a Bosch and Lom uh, 3200 Elite uh, before Bushnell took over Bosch and Lom and uh, so he bought that stuff and whatnot and I got to talking to my friend about it and everything else about uh, his dad and whatnot and told him I was looking for a scope and whatnot we just kind of strike a conversation and he offered to uh, give me that scope to use for this because uh, my buddy Chad and I are uh, Planning a big trip for a planning a big trip for a trophy mule deer next year in October. So I, you know, I told him, you know, I'd be honored to use his dad's scope. And he said, you know, he said I can have it, use it for however long I need it, this, that, and the other. So yeah, hopefully we will be. I just got to run to Pocatello, a couple hours away, uh, and go pick that up from him. But yeah, I'll be running a Bosch and Loam Elite 3200. Uh, I think it's a four and a half to 16 or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's a decent magnification, first uh, adjustable objective and stuff. Really nice. As soon as I, uh, as soon as I get my hands on it and everything else, get get that put on, we will uh, make another video of getting this thing ready for our big trophy mule deer hunt next October. Start working up load development. See if we need to start. Uh, see if we need to start uh, free floating the barrel or anything like that that we need to get into. You know. Okay. Got everything cleaned off, ready to go. So, all right, you guys. So that is doing the reinforcement for my seven mag to keep the stock 
partition lug or uh, recoil lug from cracking, uh, bedding the action, all with over-the-counter parts. You don't have to wait for Brownells to send you Acker glass if you don't want to. You can go get a bottle of JB Weld. And uh, just to show you how much I actually used, I didn't get the quick set, you guys. I didn't mention that earlier, but I did not get the quick set JB Weld. I just got the standard JB Weld and maybe used a half a tube. So, I mean, that's one action with a half a tube. If you didn't have to put in the... Uh, didn't have to put in the supports on the recoil lug. You'd probably get away with uh, probably three three bedding jobs out of uh, one package of JB Weld, and that was that. Those things are only they're less than five bucks. They're like four ninety five or four eighty five, something like that from Wally World, from Walmart. I call Walmart Wally World. Kind of goofy, I know. Reminds me of a Chevy Chase Christmas Vacation. They all just wanted to get to Wally World. Classic movie. Classic movie. Okay, that's good. All right, so I always like to put the rifle back in the stock because it does take 24 hours to get a full, full cure on the JB Weld. Just in case, I feel better. Makes me feel better. Call me an idiot. idiot. Call me dumb. Makes me feel better that nothing's going to move around. Nothing's going to shift. There's not going to be any kind of liquid, lousquid, freaking solidly liquid stuff, whatever you want to call it, that might be moving around in there and uh, prevent us from getting our gun back in the stock before it all cures. But here it is, guys. Exhaustive M70 Mauser double set triggers, 7mm rim mag. I'm going to be putting the uh, Bosch and Loam 3200 Elite. Uh, I think it's a 4 to 16 or a 4 and a half to 16, something like that, 4 to 14 maybe. Uh, adjustable objective on it here soon. And we will get back to you guys. We will start taking this guy out to the range uh, probably this spring, maybe this summer. And go from there. All right, you guys. Peace.